All right. Hello, Ruchi. How are you? Hi, Rob. Good. How about you? Doing great. It's awesome here. We are busy. We're having fun. It's hot, but all is good. Awesome. It's another summer in the pandemic. <laughs> it is another summer in the pandemic. It's, it's actually really hard to think about. This is like the second summer. Mm-hmm. So it's the second summer going into fall. So yeah, it's what's uh, new. What's new? Um, we've been busy and it's been really enriching, rewarding work. A lot of work on the leadership side, uh, a lot of work in terms of both foundational leadership skills and then some more advanced leadership skills, which is, interestingly enough, one of the topics of today's Robin Rucci show. Um, as we were preparing, we wanted to dive down deep and talk about psychological safety and leadership. And so I have some ideas and I have some things to share and I know you do. And so this is an organic conversation. And um, let me start out by asking you, Ruchi, what is psychological safety and how does it relate to leadership? What are you, what are you seeing? What are you feeling? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, psychological safety as defined is usually around the absence of fear or the feeling of being able to take risks and be yourself in the workplace. It's usually very oriented around places like work um, and whether you're able to fail without repercussion or um, or anyone trying to, I guess, retaliate. But yeah. The thing that I've been thinking about lately is actually what we define as being able to be yourself in the Mm -hmm. workplace. And I saw a definition I really liked the other day, which is um, the economic, political, social um, freedom to be Mm. yourself. So across all of these identity values, who you really are is allowed to flourish and is included actively in um, how we create a team, how we provide Mm -hmm. feedback, um, how we just work. I think that more and more is what I think of psychological safety. That's great. And I think the same. And one of the things I try to do is make it even more practical and tangible for things that you can do as a leader to create that environment of psychological safety and to create that environment that will lead to innovation by allowing people to truly be themselves. And the word that keeps coming up over and over again in the literature, uh, in the work that we do, you do, that I do, um, that word is trust. And it's a very important word because without trust, none of this can happen. You you can't have an environment where people feel comfortable to try to take that risk without uh, repercussion, to be an environment where they're not bullied and they're not um, made to feel small if they make a mistake. And so how do you create that environment of trust? Yeah. Let's rewind a little bit, even before we start talking about tactics, right? I think um, concepts like trust-based relationships, even in in leadership concepts like uh, coaching, are really hard for people to to make tangible or wrap their mind around. What does trust look like? What does it Mm -hmm. really mean? And I think it's so integral, like you said, to psychological safety that it, it bears a little bit of some attention, right? So first off, I would really suggest everyone um, look at Amy Edmondson's research. Yeah. Um, yeah. She's kind of the preeminent person and or the most current thinking around psychological safety, a professor, and she's got this great survey that is very easy to administer with teams, partners, um, what have you, around seven to 11 questions mm-hmm. um, meant to gauge people's level of psychological safety. And what it's really, what it's really measuring at its heart is a concept like trust. How much yeah. do you trust that other people are not going to retaliate, are going to allow you to be yourself. And so I think even before you start trying to be action oriented or yeah. creating an environment of psychological safety, it's really important to step back and take an inventory of where your team currently is and how they feel as human beings yeah. and what you like, whether that feels safe for you, because mm-hmm. the thing that I've found more and more in the day and age we're in, um, is that everyone's particular identity, everyone's particular baggage and trauma, everyone's particular uh, way of working is going to inform their level of trust in other people and what they interpret as safe around them. So that's like 
big concept number one, and I'm going to pause Good. there. Yeah, no, that's great. Thank, thank you for rewinding that, and I think you're, you're right. And just quick comment on all of that work that, that Amy has done. Um, there's a number of really good free videos that are available just to listen to her and to watch her. And it's very, very powerful. And I'll give you a great example of how I recently was able to embrace some of that. And we've talked a little bit about this before. In the pandemic, um, the, the nature of learning and talent development has dramatically uh, been disrupted. And so more and more, we've been in this virtual environment delivering content, delivering simulations. And one of our clients said to us, listen, I am a huge believer in psychological safety. And I never realized that this virtual environment creates a safe environment because you're not physically going to be bullied or traumatized by other people who want to be the smartest people in the room, that there's a, there's a certain level of equality that is created here. And we use some of those videos to kind of explore that. It was really strong, really powerful. Yeah, absolutely. I think, I mean, I think this is a, an interesting question when you think about tactics. I think um, what I take from that is it's not necessarily necessarily the medium. It's how people are more inclined to use the medium. And so it is quite hard to be the person dominating the entire Zoom mm. conversation. Yeah. And so there are opportunities for people to be able good to good point a voice. That's or, a really good point. Or, you know, maybe people are just not great at, you know, being center of attention when they're in a room. And mm. so this is a mode yeah. where they feel more safe or able to, yeah. um, to contribute. Or, you know, again, we I talk a lot about trauma, which is not always intersected with psychological safety. Sure. But I'm very, very interested in how um, our human trauma, everyone has some, um, mm -hmm. most of us. <laughs> yeah. Well, if they don't, then, then they're They're very lucky. Yeah. yeah. Right? Or, or lucky. Um, yeah. How, how that trauma, they carry that with them in the workplace and how the workplace reinforces it um, mm -hmm. unconsciously. And so if we mm. think about how we give feedback, for example. Yeah, to say more. So um, people might tend to give feedback in really uh, loud tones or yeah. in a tone of voice that can recall someone's traumatic experience from the past. We do things like clap to get people's attention, mm. loud noises. Um, we do things like... Uh, take a punitive look at uh, a progression in the workplace. If you don't do X, you will not get Y. Yeah. And so all of these things are ways to, I think, small in small ways, re-traumatize wow. folks who have had wow. adverse experiences in the past. And we've been conditioned in the workplace to take that and just be mm. like, that's not, that's just what happens. What you don't realize is the way that your body physically takes that stress on and the way that you mentally take that stress on um, inhibits you from being your best. And that's why psychological safety is so important too. Not wow. only do you want to be able to thrive, but if you are not psychologically safe, if you are being re-traumatized in the workplace over and over and over again, especially in like high anxiety, high rigor workplaces, um, you are not able to contribute the best of, of your thinking. You're right. not going to be innovative. You're not going to be able to, your, your brain is hardwired to survive, not thrive. Mm -hmm. You're right. And so I, I always, I'm like very passionate about yeah, that. Yeah, no, honestly, that, that's great. So now, Ruchi, as I'm listening to you passionately explain this, I do have a question that comes to my mind. Is there a difference between psychological safety and emotional safety? I don't know if it's a, uh, if it's a difference. <laughs> I think yeah. emotional safety is probably part of psychological safety. Okay. I think your emotions, like feeling like you can feel your emotions, um, is probably a component of psychological safety. If you, if you look at the question, it's like, do you agree that you can be vulnerable with other yeah. people? You look at like best practices. Are you sharing who you are and you're able to be emotional. And I think of some of the best teams I've been on, these are teams where we freely share when things are going wrong, um, mm -hmm. when we're not feeling our best. Um, right now, my biggest tip for leaders, whether you're a new manager or you've been leading a team for years and years, is to start every check-in asking the question, 
how are you feeling and give mm. people a really easy way to do it. like schools do this all the time. Right. If you think about when you were in elementary school, I don't know if you ever had like a weather chart where you're like, are you sunny, cloudy? Like, yeah, not, not where I went to elementary school. <laughs> yeah. Well, and you know what, honestly, yeah. I, me being in my thirties, I didn't have that even in my kindergarten. Even right. A lot of kids now with education being around kind of the whole self are getting those questions yeah I, I we can have another conversation about trauma another time of of um yeah teachers and the rulers and well being this, humiliated this, 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 this yeah thing. this yeah. is actually super super important for people in the workplace to consider yeah the modes of leadership that right. we grew up with and saw yeah. are things that we took on as best process <laughs> right and it is really hard, even though we buy into or are really interested in the sexy new ways of leadership. Yeah. It's very hard to change behaviors. Right. But I think what's interesting is now post pandemic, people are much more willing to challenge the status quo, to challenge the orthodoxies, to challenge even you know, your biases. And I think there's a certain element of what happened last summer uh, in terms of Black Lives Matter and all the horrible things that we saw. And there was like this moment of awakening and saying, wait a second, you know, maybe I really need to think about this and think about what are my unconscious biases and how does that come across in the workplace and how am I treating people? And you know what? Is it really that bad to start a meeting with saying, how you feeling, Ruchi? You know, you okay? <laughs> you know? Inclusion, inclusion is really important. I, and yeah. I also stress for people who might be watching for us, like this is not a North American issue. It can be yeah. very tempting to think about this as a Western oh. issue because yeah. so much of how the West operates is kind of um, broken. Yes. You know, we, yeah. we are like, um, we are, we try to do both. We try to be productivity centered and people centered and we are neither so often. But if you look at Asian contexts, mm -hmm. if you look at where command and control leadership is still like really alive, where you, you look at European contexts where, you know, vacations are more sacred than they are here. Right, right. There are so many pieces of evidence where um, a, a stronger people orientation helps and hinders yeah. right and so I think I think thinking about how are you translating the concept of psychological safety to yeah. your individual context is really important it is you're, you're so right I did an interesting program a couple of weeks ago in Asia um, and was really focused around uh, Thailand and Malaysia uh, parts of Singapore it was for one of our clients it was a um, program for LGBT uh, and it was for them to have some business acumen skills so that they could feel more comfortable being themselves in the business environment. It was really great to, to have and get a sense of the, the culture outside of the U.S. around how are the norms uh, you know, just different and, and what does it take for somebody to come out uh, in Malaysia uh, to their parents and and quite frankly how things have changed quite a bit as well from what you think yeah i mean i, I think like issues of inclusion when it comes mm -hmm. to psychological safety are really important especially like we're so used to in the west thinking about it as race and gender and it, it goes so much beyond that when yeah. you look at uh for example south asian contexts right things like intercommunal violence mm. or um, cast like things like that yeah. become really important to the conversation and so as a leader like if we go back to your question your original question about mm. tips, yeah right, I think like one of the biggest tips I give to, to leaders in the workplace or even just you as an individual contributor if you're trying to make the environment safe for other people like awareness and education mm -hmm. really understanding what are the stories of the people on your team right and the things that they're bringing with them so Good. I think that's number one to me Yep. So let me throw out one on the table as well. So as we kind of come to the uh, end of the Robin Rochi show, we do want to have some tips and some thoughts here. I've been thinking about this and preparing for it. Um, one of my tips is to focus on performance and to have performance be one of the drivers as the catalyst for the conversation, the catalyst for making people feel safe and giving them that right coaching in the proper way so that they can reach their optimal performance and gain that confidence. Um, so that's one thing I've been thinking about in, in terms of a tip. 
Yeah, I think um, the the thing I'd add on to that, if, yeah. you're, if you're looking from a performance lens, I think it's really important for leaders to understand that uh, performance, like what are their goals? What are the yes. expectations that you're, you carry when you look at performance, right? So we talk a little bit, a bit about what caused people to maybe not be really into this idea of psychological safety. It might be unfamiliar. Mm-hmm. The other thing that causes a lot of leaders to cringe away from it is this idea of accountability. You can't have yeah. accountability and safety at the same time. And actually, yeah. there's a really nifty chart that we can put in the comment section after this. Okay, oh, good. But it, it, what it shows you is two axes. We've got like permission and respect, mm-hmm. um, right? And so, um, oh, actually... So I'll talk to you about two frameworks. I know we're we're going to go over a little today. That's okay. But we've we've got two frameworks. So we've got permission and respect, right? The more permission you give people to kind of be who they are and the more respect you give them, Mm -hmm. the more, the higher up they're going to advance in the stages Mm. of psychological safety. They're going to move from an exclusion stage all the way at the bottom. Yep to uh, what we'll call like a challenger stage. Right. You want, that's where people feel so psychologically safe that they're able to challenge the status quo. And that's where you've gone beyond what we call that's the innovation right. threshold. Nice. So that's like first, you want to get people in a space, okay. not only where they're performing, but where they're able to challenge the status quo. That's right. That's a great tip. The second framework that has to do with this, when you think about accountability specifically, is thinking about psychological safety on one axis and accountability on another. Mm. If you have low psychological safety, but high accountability, you're square in this zone that a lot of people are in, which is anxiety, anxiety yeah. zone. Yeah. If you have low psychological safety and low accountability, you're in like this kind of like apathy zone where you don't care about stuff. Right. Right. If you have high psychological safety, low accountability, you're in comfort. You're just coasting. Where we want people are all the way having all the psychological safety, all the accountability. Mm -hmm. That means they're at the the top corner of the the matrix in this quadrant that we call the the learner zone. This is where you're able to learn and grow. Interesting, which is yet, and you didn't know this, obviously, um, but my blog today is actually on the topic of how can one as a leader help to coach accountability? Because it's not just an expectation. You don't just show up one day and you're accountable. Mm -hmm. Leaders have a responsibility for helping people to be more accountable. And what are some of the things? I I actually just coincidentally gave a couple of tips. I love Um, that. Yeah, it, it, it actually turned out, it was based on a real conversation uh, a real workshop that I did with a client. Uh, that's great. Um, and so it's one, top of mind. It's top of mind. It's so top of mind. And then the last thing that I'll add um, related to that was that part of that ability as a leader to help coach accountability was being vulnerable as a leader, admitting your mistakes, showing that you're not good at everything, that you try to do things. And that vulnerability is really a critical part of it. Huge. That's another thing. This I is learned. a great, great note to end on. I think yeah. it's possibly the biggest value add, and maybe not the easiest, but probably the lowest touch thing that leaders can do. Yeah. Um, to help start creating an environment of psychological safety, and and just ways that you can be vulnerable as examples, tell personal stories. Mm-hmm. Um, make sure, you know, that they're appropriate, but like tell personal right. stories, <laughs> um, you know, uh, point out failures and then point out what you did to fix them mm-hmm. and ask for help, share what you're really good at, and then share what you wish more people would ask you to do. Um, and then the last one I think is just encourage vulnerability in other people, show them that they're allowed to share back, let right. them be who they are. That's right. That's great. Wow, Richie, as always, I love it. I just love the insights. Always gives me things to think about for the coming week and weeks after that and very practical. Thank you. All right. For anyone who's watching, if you want to find out more, leave some comments in uh, or leave some some replies in the comments. We're happy to share more information, more thoughts. If there are any topics you want us to cover in the next couple of Robin Richie shows, please let us know. Great. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Richie. We'll see you again soon. Bye, Rob. Bye.